Cool isn't easy for everyone, but when you look like me, prune face patty, school isn't just a battlefield, it's an all-out war zone, and everyone's declared war on me. Welcome to my hell. Welcome to high school. After the events at the cabin and meeting Mira, I stopped crying so much. I stopped thinking about my ugliness. Instead, I considered the ugliness of everyone else, of how they treated me. Although I knew the power I harnessed, I still felt compelled to keep it to myself, to keep her to myself. When it all becomes overwhelming sometimes and I feel like I'm going to explode from everyone's cruelty. I have to find a place to hide. On this particular day, I decided to hide in the girls' bathroom. I had walked in on Laura, the blonde bombshell of them all, and her two beauty queen crones, Kara and Cindy, during one of their vape escapes. Everyone knows this bathroom is their personal lounge. The three of them hang out and smoke these stupid scent-flavored vapes and complain about everything and everyone. With Laura leading the way and Kara and Cindy simply nodding their bimbo brains and laughing at anything she says, my first mistake was entering. My second mistake was making direct eye contact with Laura. She smirked at me in her holier-than-thou way and in her hoity-toity voice said, Well, if it isn't prune face patty, I thought I smelled something burning. I quickly turned around to leave, but before I knew it, Kara and Cindy had the door covered. This was no longer the girls' restroom. It was a lion's den, and feeding time was about to start. They had me surrounded. I tried to push through to the door, but Kara and Cindy just pushed me back to Laura. I kept my head low as she stared me down, licking her overly lip-glossed lips as she passed judgment on me. Laura barked out, If you tell anyone about us beeping, I'll make you regret being born. Laughing to herself as she continued on. <laughs> Though when I think about it, you must already regret that. I mean, look at you. I could hear Cindy and Kara behind me nearly losing their lunch with laughter. But then, at that moment, the pocket mirror I took from the cabin was gripped in my hand. I had removed it from my backpack, but I didn't remember it ever happening. Like something else had willed it into my hand. Maybe somebody else. Look at you. You'd have been luckier if the fire had taken your eyes, so you'd never have to see yourself. She then blew a large cloud of cinnamon roll scented vape in my face. My hand shook violently holding the mirror as the cloud of smoke fell over me. You're right, I said. They stopped dead in their laughter, shocked at my agreement. I'm hideous. I'm the most grotesque thing any of you will ever see. But you, Laura? You're the prettiest thing. The prettiest girl in school. I'll never be like you, never. I then held up the mirror for Laura to see, and then I opened it for her. As she stared at her reflection, intoxicated in her own looks, she pulled out an eyeliner and applied it. Now why would you ever need a mirror prune face? Nothing's ever going to fix that ugly mug of yours. Again, you're right. I told her, I can't ever fix my face. 
but she can fix yours. Suddenly, Laura's expression shifted as a girl with a broken, split, bloody face, a girl named Mira, looked back at her. Mira, in the pocket mirror, then held out her own hand, showing a rusty razor blade. And somehow, without anyone seeing, Laura's eyeliner was that same rusty razor blade. Mira dragged the blade across her own open eyes, and then Laura, fighting and screaming against the possession of her hand, did the same to herself. Laura, unable to close her lids or stop herself, ran the rusty blade across her own eye sockets, spilling them out all over the bathroom floor. I had never seen anything like it. Tears of blood flooding out of her once beautiful eyes. She fell to the ground, blind, screaming in agony, holding her face where her eyes once were. Cindy and Kara screamed in absolute terror at the sight of Laura. But before they could run away, arms reached out from the mirrors just behind them over the bathroom sinks and turned them to face them. In that moment, as they looked upon themselves, they saw their reflections, their true reflections, as if time had fast forward they aged over a hundred years in what seemed like seconds. Their movie star looks faded to wrinkled, liver-spotted skin hanging off of brittle bones eventually disintegrating to piles of ash surrounding the now beautifully blinded Laura, writhing on the floor with her hands reaching out for anyone to help. Help me. Please, what is happening? She whimpered out of her blood-covered lips. It was all I could do to not laugh at her, blinded by her own beauty. I looked down at the ground then and saw the rusty razor blade on the floor and a hand reached for it. It was Mira. Without seeing how, she was standing right there with me. With Laura between us on her knees, Mira held out the razor blade to me. She wanted me to finish the job, to join in her judgment. I didn't know what to do, unsure of everything all over again, and then Laura spoke. She just had to say it. I'm going to kill you, prune face. Even in her demise, she could still find the ugliness inside. I had made up my mind. I took the blade from Mira, gripped Laura's hair into my fist, and whispered in her ear, I'm the one who judges now. And before another breath could escape her pretty little mouth, I split her throat from ear to ear. I had never felt more relief than in that moment. More justified. More, more powerful. I let it wash over me, and before I knew it, it was over. The high school beauty queens were no more, and never to be my problem or anyone else's ever again. I went to the bathroom sink washed my hands, dried them, and as if nothing had happened, I walked out the bathroom door and never looked back. But not before I made sure I had my pocket mirror close by. Welcome to my high school. It's time to bring the hell back to it. Back to them. Watch new vids every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on Crypt TV.